明日の晩帰りますもう一度聞いてくださいはい。All right, so now on to the tips. I'm just going to go through a whole big mess of stuff that I've learned that has helped me make this move look、uh, like it does. I don't want to say good because I personally don't think it's at a good enough level yet. I have to keep practicing the move and hopefully learning more tips.、Um, I'm not really going to give out any credit for these tips because most of the stuff that I've discovered from, for this move has been my own. If something jogs my memory that I learned it from someone else, I will credit you if I remember. If not, I'm very sorry. And thank you for that. So,、uh, one of the first things before you actually even do the move is the flashing of a break at the front of the deck. Now, this is evident like if you put the deck into regular mechanics grip, even with like the smallest break, you can still kind of see that right there where the break is held. This is pretty much unavoidable. You'd have to hold like a tiny, tiny little flesh break for you not to really be able to see it. And that little flesh break is not、uh, applicable to the SWE shift because with SWE shift, you are using an Erdnays break, which looks like this. So, what you will get is a line at the front of the deck before you actually go into creating the step. Now, Let's say you got your Erdnays break. You don't really want this line showing at the front, especially with lighting, like shining down on it. It will make it really even that much more obvious. So, what I do is I keep the break as small as possible. And it kind of decreases like the space right here. And that's done by just kind of pinching some of the flesh of the pinky when you're holding the Erdnays break. Now, the,、uh, the gap right here that sometimes flashes like that. That is covered by these three fingers. That's how I do the move. I hold the deck along the side and I cover the、uh, I cover this part of the break. And as for down here where I can't really cover, the best way to avoid that is to again hold a really, really light break, have your fingers here, and have a slight upward pressure with the index finger. The reason、uh, you can get away with having pressure underneath the deck and not have it look awkward. Is because the index finger actually has to use pressure to complete the move. So that pressure just looks normal with the rest of the move. So if you cover up here with your,、uh, you hold a small, smallest break as possible, you cover up with your three fingers right here, and you use a slight upward pressure with the index finger, you will get that break will not be as obvious. Now, it's still going to be obvious unless you practice like a madman for about 20 years. Then maybe you'll get it totally invisible. So, check back to my channel in about 20 years and we'll see if I have it invisible yet. Now, <clears throat> for the next part.、Uh, actually, I would like to attribute that、uh, break holding thing right there to. I forget who it was on Theory 11 Forum. Someone actually noted it out when I posted a performance video a while ago. And to Casey Rudd because he took.、Uh, no. Not Casey, it was Corbin because he actually said something about the break in a comment on my video and it led me to play around with hiding that break a little bit more and that's where those tips came from. So, inspiration credits go to Corbin and that one guy on Theory 11 that I cannot remember. Sorry about that. Now, the next part, you will notice the flashing thumb. Watch my right thumb. Oops. It flashes into view right as I do the move. Now, this is pretty much. Unavoidable because it is an essential part to the move. The thumb has to catch that packet to bring it back on top as you do the move. If you didn't, 
I can't even do it without it. It would be like, like that. If you didn't catch it, it would be like, oh, I'm still catching it. It would be like that if you didn't use the thumb. So the thumb will always flash a little bit, but what you want to avoid doing is this. You don't want to put the thumb up before you actually do the move. For me, I create my step. As I push down, I just release the thumb, and it automatically just kind of pops off that bottom packet and comes to catch the, uh, the new top packet. So it's like I have the break, as I start the move, the thumb just kind of slides up with the rest of the hand and will catch the uh, incoming top packet. This, uh, I mean, it drastically decreases the amount of thumb flash that you have, right, like that. It's better than what I used to do. Some guy pointed out, again, on Theory 11, so credits to him for this. I was going like this. I would get the break, and I put my thumb up right before I do the move. That is one, it's a tail. And two, it looks awkward, and it's another tell as the move is being completed. So it's a tell beforehand because the thumb is up, and it's a tell afterwards because the thumb then drops back down, and it looks awkward. So that's the first two things, hiding the break and avoiding the thumb flash. The last, uh, well, I don't know if this is the last. This is the third, sorry. The third tip I want to come to is actually about um, a Chris Kenner subtlety to this move. If you guys watch Chris Kenner, nothing against the man, he's awesome, I love him, as a magician, not as like, yeah, but he's awesome, and he's a cool dude, and whatnot, but, uh, what he does when he does this move, is that. I even watched his one-on-one, -on -one and he, he throws those hands up. Sure, it makes the move look a lot more invisible, because you can't really see the top packets transposing, but it doesn't look good. The raising the hands is obviously a tell. It's kind of like doing this when you do a classic pass. Or doing this. Or one of these jobs. One of those. That is comparable to doing this when you do the SWE. Don't do that. What I do, <coughs> well, when I first learned, that's what I did because the moved the move sucked. I mean, I was had to do that to cover the move. So to avoid that habit, I actually would lock my elbows in against my ribs, and I would hold my arms as stiff as possible, and I would just sit there and do SWE shifts without moving my hands. Now the tension in your hands and everything is going to make this look really awkward, but when you get better at the move, you can relax that tension and hopefully not suck at this move, and you'll get it to look really nice because that bottom packet just kind of pops out, and it almost gives a retention of vision aspect because the audience will perceive that the top packet hasn't really moved. It looks like it's just kind of lifted up. Instead of having this whole deal, which is a tell, even if you can't see the move, they understand that something is probably happening. If I just do this, it just kind of looks like I maybe like lifted up the bottom packet sort of like that or something. <clears throat> That's just me. If you want to do it Chris Kenner's way, his one-on-one -on -one was awesome for the move, and you can go ahead and check it out if you want to do that, but I don't recommend it, and that, that's just my, uh, my tip on the move, is not to do that whole little jumpy flare thing. And the last tip I have is about the speed of the move. Most people say that when you're doing passes and whatnot, speed is not everything, but with this move, you want to have a little bit of smoothness, and a lot of speed. Because I can do this move all smooth like that, and it looks pretty nice, but the speed is really what will give you the necessary like flick up and that retention of vision that I was talking about. So what you want to do is you just want to train doing the move really fast. Like you don't want to have any pauses when you're doing the move. Because I remember when I was learning this, what I would do is I would get the break, I'd pause. I'd get the step and do the shift right away and I'd pause again. So what it would look like is this. Now I kind of pause right there and like hold that packet up and it just looked it looked kind of awkward. So what you want to do is you want to make the whole move flow through itself. You just want to be like bam, SWV, yeah, SWE shift. Bam. 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 Alright. And that is all I have on the SWE shift. If you have a uh, 
I tried to cover most of the aspects that I had trouble with with this move. If you have specific questions that you're not understanding with this move, please send me a PM and I will then reply to you either with a private video or it's just a word description. I didn't reply beforehand as I said because um, I just didn't really want to give out a lot of tips if I was going to be making this into a full legitimate video. But that is Erdnase Journal Entry Numero Uno. See you next time.